But what's going on, Tom? I'm doing a radio show, George. Uh, okay. Hey, I did the ultimate cutback. I married a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> That's one way to say when holiday shopping. <laughs> People get way too butthurt about what people say these days. It's, it's ridiculous. Way too butthurt. I like that. So, it's how it works. I don't want to buy gifts for anybody, but if anyone wants to get me a gift, I'm all in favor. There you go. I love you, Tom. You're just so intelligent, and I adore you, and I tell my kids to listen to you and make sure they're going to grow up to be just like you. That's what the world needs, Debbie. More kids to grow up to be just like me. Stop Ooh. pretending that hockey is some kind of mammy pamby family event like the Ringling Brothers Circus. This is yeah. this is a man sport played by men. Men who drink and fight and curse and bleed and get stitched up and lose all their teeth. And that's what makes it fantastic. By the way, my microphone fell off the stand. Now I'm holding it. Unbelievable. I feel like I'm on a date with Jim Brown, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, you are in denial. I, I don't know if I'm in, in denial. Right, do whatever you want. <laughs> Fine. What are you calling me for? You obviously know everything you need to know. No, I don't. You, no, you, I'm you don't. telling you, she wants to have a goddamn baby. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll miss Bill here in the radio business. Yes, Bill had a big mouth when he came to the radio business. He was going to dominate the radio business. <laughs> Bye-bye, Bill. I can't do it. It's pretty obvious now. I was thinking you predict the future and everything quite a bit. You're great at it. I have a new name for you. No host or Domus. <laughs> my space is the space between my left thigh and my right thigh. And don't get me started on sit on my Facebook. You know, you just put it down on paper and you tell, you know, honey, uh, this is not a good year. Times are tough, but I just wanted to say how much I love you. And even though I couldn't afford to get you the kind of gift I wanted to get you, I just wanted you to know that you're the most important thing to me. I wanted to put it in writing and write a letter that you could hold and keep for the rest of your life, telling you how much I care. You know how much money you could save by writing some piece of crap like that? From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likens Show. Mr. Honor, I, I stand before you today, uh, sorry, somewhat confused. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likens. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likens Show. Anybody see O.J. Simpson sentenced? <laughs> Once again, O.J. made for great television. Oh, my God. O.J. Simpson sentenced to a minimum of nine years in prison <laughs> for his activities in Las Vegas. As he called it, trying to get my stuff back. I wasn't robbing, I wasn't stealing. I was just trying to get my stuff back, Your Honor. <laughs> With a gun and a bunch of accomplices. But come on, the guy wanted his stuff back. <laughs> what a defense. You ever think about calling a lawyer? <laughs> I mean, you certainly have enough of them. Calling the police. Somebody's selling your stuff. They've got your stuff and they're selling it. Wouldn't it make sense to, like, call in your legal team and say, there's a guy here. He's got my stuff, but he's selling it. <laughs> no, let's get a gun and some accomplices and go in there. Because I just want my stuff back. Yeah. Then they tried to say, they, they tried to say that O.J. Uh, uh, should be uh, allowed to stay out of uh, prison pending an appeal because he's not a danger to society. <laughs> Come on! Anyone who got sideswiped by that Bronco? <laughs> Anybody who left their glasses at an Italian restaurant can tell you what kind of a danger he is to society. Oh, no, they can't tell you, I guess, but you can imagine what they'd say. <laughs> Bye-bye, O.J. We'll miss you there in prison.
Now you leave us with what? Phil Spector? Not good enough. Anyway, wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. It happens every Friday at this time. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call in, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. And anything can happen on wide open telephones. As long as you are just riveting. But you have to call us here at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. No topic is off the table. It's Tim on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going? It's going okay. Yeah, I, I caught a little bit of your uh, your topic on Sean Avery earlier this week, but I didn't catch all of it. I heard you say you you know him. I've known Sean Avery for years. Okay, what's what's the deal with this guy? Because I, 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 I saw a special on him, uh, I think it was during a Kings game earlier this season. And uh, this guy, is he a fairy or what? I mean, this guy's all into fashion shows and purse shopping. What's the deal? He's into picking up chicks is what he's into. And uh, if you're in that world, uh, what a great way to pick up chicks. But, I mean, would you, would you uh, go purse shopping? Well, I wouldn't, but we've all got our own way of doing it. You certainly right. can't complain about the results that Sean has has gotten. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take your word for it. Uh, since you know him, I don't. I'll, I'll take your word for it. That's not how I would get a chick. But I understand. But uh, we've all got our own methods. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, that clears it up for me. Anyway, I'll tell you what, though. If you, you if you think Sean Avery's a fairy, um, I will invite you next time he's in town. <laughs> uh, to come meet him, and you can tell him yourself. Oh well, as long as I got. Would you like to do that? I'm back. I'll be all right. I'll tell you what. No, no, no. You don't need any. Uh, what, what are you, OJ? You don't need any reinforcements. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no I, gun. If the guy's a fairy, uh, you should go tell him, and I can arrange <laughs> that meeting. All right, but you see where I'm coming from, right? Because I mean, he's on there with uh, Heidi Andral and. Uh, He's just enjoying a fashion show, and he has actual takes on uh, fashion. And I, I see this guy, and, in his and as a result, and, and like as a, a result, scarf to match his beard. And What's chicks are chicks are all over him. Okay. Now again, I think it's probably just because he's if a you think player, if but. you think he's a fairy, I'm, t- I'm telling you, if you think he's a fairy, uh, Dean will take your phone number off the air, and the next time the Dallas Stars come to Los Angeles. Uh, I will arrange a meeting between you and him, and you can tell him personally. Okay, well... Hopefully uh, after he's had a couple favor, of drinks. Can you I, I, you can, can tell him personally what a fairy you think he is. Can you get Dustin Brown in on that uh, arrangement? Uh, Dustin Brown has nothing to do with this. This is between you and Sean Avery. <laughs> All right, I, all right, Ben. All right? I'm, no, I'm not, I'm not interested in that. That's all right. I can set but, that up uh, for you. But, uh... No, it's okay. Well, right, who's a fairy now? Uh, well, I, I, I was just asking your opinion on it. You know, I, don't, well, I, I don't gave it to you, and then you continue to say you think he's a fairy. I mean, we can we can resolve because I'm right? telling you, we can resolve this once and for all. Okay, all right. Are you going to bring it on air? Or? If you want me to bring a microphone and uh, to to record your meeting with Sean Avery, I'll be more than happy to. All right. Well, let's do it on the Tom Likas show. We'll do it live. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Good luck to you. Well, hey, I, I, love, I love your show, and uh, I'm a big Kings fan. And uh, can you take me out polka style? Polka style? Uh, yes, I certainly can. Here it is. That's, That's probably under um, Mariners style, oh. Seattle Mariners or Mariners, because it was the accordion, because the Mariners folded like an accordion. Nope. No, and it's not polka style. Nope. It's not accordion style. Yep. Ah. Can we uh, relabel that? <laughs> you know, it really gets you inside the head of a person when you see under what letter or what word they file something. I'll tell you what. 
I think Brett Abbott and Dennis Miller are made for each other. I do. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Ruby on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ruby. How are you? It really doesn't matter because I know you're about to ambush me here, and I'm just waiting. <laughs> I'm just sitting here drumming my fingers, waiting <laughs> waiting for the, uh, the the pleasantries and the phoniness of the beginning of the call to be supplanted <laughs> by the uh, visceral, uh, blood-curdling uh, crap that's about to come out of your mouth. Now, so why don't you just bring it up? <laughs> Not really. Um, I, just, I just called to let you know that... Um, I used to hear from you because my ex-boyfriend used to, or he actually listens to you. I'm sure he's listening to you now. And I used to think you were full of crap, but you, now you, I well, enjoy you, First of all, you never heard from me. I never called you. You turned on no. the radio. That's not hearing from me. I know. What I'm saying is I love listening to your show. You do? Yes, I yes because you keep it you keep it real and I need you know I need a guy to keep it real. I was in darkness when I was in a relationship and I you know I was with this well you called some other guy the other day a loser. You were talking to some girl and she was dating a loser. I was dating a loser. Right. Um, besides the fact, I mean, he listened to you, but a lot of the things like he would take advantage. Yeah. Zero tolerance policy. Yeah. The S word not approved for broadcast. Sorry. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. I told you anything could happen here. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. You can tell how short that one was, right? It's like three minutes. The Tom Likas Show coming to you from Hollywood. Don't forget, tomorrow's the debut of our sixth day in Los Angeles. Tune in tomorrow between 2 and 6. Come on, you're cruising around on Saturday afternoon. And now so are we. Join me tomorrow from Las Vegas, 2 to 6 p.m. That's 2 to 6 p.m. tomorrow. 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones on this Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what'd it be like? Uh, I don't know. All right. Hey, listen, I was just uh, kind of inspired by the last caller. It was kind of entertaining about the uh, hockey player and uh, and who I'm not familiar with, but uh, that he was calling him a fair and you were saying he's not and this and that. And it brought back, a, and I haven't heard this for a while from you, but... I know you've talked about soccer players and that they're, you know, they're not that masculine or they're, they're not that tough or athletes, this and that. And I know you like to go to bars. So I would, I imagine at that time, just imagine you in a bar and some soccer player that heard you say what you said. And then he would go up to you and say, what did you say about soccer players? And you're kind of fat and out of shape, I'm sure. You'd melt like a house of cards. Don't be so sure. I've had many. Oh, right? I, yes, yes. I've had many arguments. <laughs> so do you think you could take on a professional soccer player? Depends on who it is. Fight? Depends on who it is. Oh, who it is. Any professional Who it is. Player I'll tell you what. You put, a, you put a soccer player up against a rugby player and it's no contest. I'm talking about a soccer no player contest. against Tom like it. Well, I just answered so your question, pal. There you go. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Jonathan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom Likas, how you doing? I'm okay. Yeah, um, I was uh, listening to the radio earlier and I heard... A few other stations comment on uh, OJ and his uh, conviction, and it seems to me that they're ecstatic about it. It seems also that you are. Is, it, is that true? Well, uh, I am, uh, and the primary reason I am is because OJ has committed a crime and been convicted of it, and he's getting what a criminal deserves. Okay, no doubt, no doubt. You're not holding it against from, like, the past or anything, right? Because that, uh, that was kind of brought up by the, the judge, though, that this is not to be, you know, something that I have a, uh, a vendetta to fill or anything like that. This is merely on the point of... Well, it's, most it's, people believe that O.J. Simpson committed murder in, uh, back in 1994. Yeah, no doubt. I and, it, and, no. and I agree with the judge when the judge said that the jury uh, should not and could not consider that in their decision. And uh, she reiterated that today. Yeah. Uh, but um, that doesn't mean that we're not in the courtroom. 
Uh, the judge's no instruction doesn't uh, doesn't apply to us. And if you think the guy committed murder and that he's finally going to prison, I think it's only human to be happy to see him go. That, that, that's pretty fair. But uh, I was listening to uh, these stations on top of radio. A lot of people that I was I'm listening to on top radio are uh, Caucasian, white, what have you. And uh, it seems that they just had a little bit of giddiness in it. Like they were happy that this happened to be so. You think there's a little bit of, um, you know... Black, black issue well, I'm not saying that doesn't. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that doesn't exist. Uh, of course, I, I, I will tell you this. Uh, and again, you're innocent until proven guilty. But I'd like to see Phil Spector go too. Oh, Phil Spector. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's that's good on that. Definitely. No, but the point I made to you is for me, it's not a matter of race. And yeah, I gotta say, that's for me. I, I gotta tell you something. I gotta tell you something else about O.J. Simpson, the celebrity. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, many black celebrities have made the following uh, and comment about about the way America perceives certain black people. Yeah. And, and what they have said is that there are certain black people for whom for that for whom whites don't consider them black. Yeah, yeah, they've been shady. Right? And so uh, I think that O.J. Simpson, with his appearances on uh, the, the uh, NBC football coverage for years and then appearing in the Naked Gun movies, I think he was definitely one of the people who fit into that category. Well, I think it's just the fact that that kind of takes off success as well. You get so far, and then to the lady trying to get it labeled, like, well, you know, he doesn't know who he is anymore because he's made it into this realm of people. Right. So, I mean, I have to say that kind of, I guess, uh, unfair in some of the case, but, I mean, for black people itself, that's, a, that's, that's just an issue I think we need to get over. Well, I, again, I, I, I mean, I'll be the last one to tell you there's no racism. Of course there's racism. I, look, I grew up in the South Bronx, uh, one of the blackest places in the world, okay? And uh, I, I mean, that's, that, that's a lot. And I, I, I grew up 11 blocks from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, okay? okay. So, so believe me, I'm very familiar with this world. Uh, I'm not black, but I've lived in this world, and I will tell you that uh, for me, this is not about O.J. Simpson being black. I don't disagree with you that there are people who are racist who who are like that. But uh, you know what else is out there? There's people who are tired of celebrities getting away from things who are happy to see him go. There are people who are tired of rich people getting away with things who are happy to see him go. So you can't assume because somebody's white that it's all about racism. For some it is. For some it's other things. And for some it's all of them. So, well, hey, Tom, uh, nice talk with you, man. Can you uh, take me out, Kobe style? I certainly can, Jonathan. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Dana on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. Two Hi. things about two things about OJ. First of all, um, I'm glad he did what he did in Vegas because now he's getting what he deserves. Number one, and number two, when that just caller, I was just listening to him. By the way, they've got a new ad campaign. Have you heard about this? It's the new ad campaign. Whoever commits crimes in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, there you go. Perfect. That is perfect. <laughs> Now, listen, the other thing I want to say is when um, blacks, and I'm not prejudiced either, I was brought up in New York, New York in the Bronx, too. So I'm not prejudiced by no far. But the, when it comes to a race issue, it's the blacks that use it as an excuse, well, because he's not going to get away with it because he's black. Well, I don't agree that all blacks are like that. I don't think Barack Obama's like that. Absolutely I don't not. think Oprah Winfrey is like that. I don't think right. Michael Jordan is like that. Uh, I don't think Bill Cosby is like that. That. I give you right. a list of people who are not like that. Right. What I'm saying is the ignorant run ones of their race, and there's ignorant white, there's ignorant ignorant Mexican. But every time there's a problem and it's black, and they have to have a um, what do you a, like a racist thing? But if it's a white person, oh, well, again, it. again, I, uh, that's that's a, a, an overgeneralization and a stereotype. Chris Rock is not like that. Chris Rock is the exact opposite. He goes on that stage in front of a mostly black audience and goes on and on about O.J. being a murderer. 
Oh, I know. It's all his last one that he did. It's awesome. He is hilarious. All right, but then, you see, I, 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 I'm trying to make a point that, that you're falling right into that category by saying something like that. Because nope. I, I know black people who think O.J. Simpson did it. Right, exactly. And but who, he's getting and, what he deserves. He did it. He, yeah, but know? here's the deal. <laughs> here's the deal. Is he getting today what he deserves for what he did back I then? Know. Absolutely. Well, yeah, well, no, 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 no. I mean, oh, you mean for the biggest thing? Yes, he's getting what he deserves. For no, that. no, I mean Absolutely. what he did in 1994. I mean, there are people out there who see this as the punishment for what he did in 1994. <laughs> Uh, no, that's no. It shouldn't be for that. It's for what he did in Vegas. But he deserves to be there, and he should have been there a long time ago because he killed um, his wife and Hi. that guy. Well, it, it could be argued that had the jury done the right thing in 1994, we wouldn't be in court today. No, I don't think so. He did what he did, and OJ he would be what in he prison. Got. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, had he had he been put in prison back uh, uh, in, uh, was it 1996, when they finally uh, came up with a verdict in that case, right. had they done the right thing then, we wouldn't be sitting here now with another court case. You've got a very valid point there. <laughs> uh, all right, Dana. Thanks well, a lot. Thanks. Thank I'm you. glad he's in there. <laughs> uh, a lot of people are glad he's in there. Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show now six days a week. Starting tomorrow. If you live in Los Angeles, turn in tomorrow between 2 and 6 on 97.1 FM Talk. And if you do not live in Southern California, if the signal eludes you, go to blowmeuptop.com. Blowmeuptop.com. Click on the Listen Live button between 2 and 6 p.m. Pacific Time tomorrow. Here our sixth day. Tomorrow coming to you live from Las Vegas. I'm going to see the Oscar De La Hoya Manny Pacquiao fight tomorrow. So I'll be in Las Vegas. But there will be a live show tomorrow as we begin six-day-a-week broadcasting. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's wide open telephones. Israel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yes, Tom. How are you? I'm great. All right, Tom. I love your show. Uh, I just, I, I listen to you almost every day. I, I, I like your show and <laughs> think you tell the truth about the ladies a lot of times. But Thank you. Just, just, just one thing I disagree with. I, I, I like the woman with the big, the big, the big booties. I, I, I'm just a, I'm a, I'm a hip man. <laughs> <laughs> but when it, when it comes to OJ, uh, uh, my thing is, Tom, is, okay, I personally, this is just my personal opinion. Like the last caller that you just had, I feel myself that she, 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 she deserves me because a lot of, there are a lot of whites and also people of other races who they won't admit the fact that they're really prejudiced. And I personally don't feel that OJ killed Ron and Nicole. I personally feel that also this last friend that he did, he was wrong. But we cannot tell. I mean, if somebody takes your stuff, okay, you don't know how, how you would react. He was wrong to do what he did. But I, it just angers me as a black male because I know that a lot of these whites and foreigners that are calling to your show, they're, they're so happy and gleeful. And I know really deep down inside, a lot of them are prejudiced. And they won't admit it. Well, I, 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 I don't disagree that there's prejudice. And I don't disagree that there's racism in this country. Believe me, I know there is. But by the same token, this is a country that just elected an African-American president. And so while there is racism and prejudice out there, you have to admit it isn't everybody. And it isn't every white person. And, and, and look, yeah, yeah, that's true, Tom. I agree with you. But see, also, it's not just the whites. A lot of these foreigners, especially... The, a lot of these, uh, you know, Mexicans and all these other foreigners. See, these, these people call in and they say this stuff about O.J. because a lot of them are against. Well, you people. don't you don't doubt that O.J. is guilty of the crimes that that he was just sentenced for today, do you? I, I, I believe I believe Tom that he was wrong, but I be, like I said, it, he wasn't it, just it, wrong. It, he was guilty of serious crimes, and he admitted it in his apology. Yeah, he, he he was wrong and he was guilty, but I'm just saying I, as, as he was wrong for what he did. But I'm just saying this is kidnapping. People, people, this is assault with a deadly weapon. This is these are big crimes. No, no I, I I mean, I, yeah, I agree with you, but I'm just saying people don't. Nobody knows how they'll react if somebody took their 
take their stuff. It doesn't matter just, how we <laughs> react. You know, and, well, you, you might kill someone if someone took your stuff, but you, but you wouldn't have the right to do that. Yeah, no, I, I understand, Tom. It doesn't saying, matter oh, what, what we would or wouldn't do. But, but what I, matters is what we actually do and what is legal to do. And but, what O.J. Simpson did in this case was clearly illegal. That, that's that, that's true, Tom. But what happened was when they take his when they took his stuff, they were also wrong. Also, it, it doesn't matter whether yeah, you know. what the reason is that he did it. Well, I I I, I understand they were both wrong, Tom. And Kidnapping I and assault with a deadly weapon are crimes. <laughs> But, but the, I'm saying the people that took his stuff, they should be arrested also. That's but again, you, you, let me let me give you an example. You know, I catch people all the time. Myself, I own a variety of service marks and trademarks on things like Flash Friday and Like Us 101. And I've cruised through the internet and seen people trying to get away with selling T-shirts and selling coffee mugs and using my name to sell stuff all the time. Now, I do not go over there with a few friends and a gun and try to stop them. Okay. I, what I do is I pick up the phone and I call my attorney. Yeah. And I've got a legal team. By the way, who has more attorneys than O.J. Simpson? I, I call a member of my legal team. Yeah. And I say, here's a guy who's trying to sell stuff with my name on it. I didn't endorse it. I, uh, the quality is terrible. I wouldn't want my fans thinking that I would, would sell crap like this. And the attorney takes care of it the way you're supposed to take care of it, legally. Right. You see, that's how it's done. Now, O.J. Simpson is, is not a moron. USC graduate, long history of working in a variety of businesses. O.J. Simpson knows what's right and what's wrong. Right. I, and I, what I, he did was clearly wrong, and it doesn't matter what his explanation was. Right. He I, deserves I, to go to prison because he knows what he did was wrong. But and he, and to pretend he didn't know there was something wrong with getting a bunch of henchmen and a gun <laughs> and going in there and threatening somebody is is, is who's going to believe that? Yeah, I, I I mean I I I agree with you, Tom. He was he was wrong, but I'm just saying. Also, the people see, see I'm, I'm, there are two things that are bothering me. Two two things: the people that are calling in so happy about just this crime. I said the reason that they're happy because he was convicted of this crime. This crime didn't really bother them. The crime that bothered them was the one that they themselves already feel that he's guilty about ten, uh, tw uh, fifteen years ago. That's that's what they're, that's what they're. But see, they're not. Well, I, I. By the way, I happen to believe he was guilty of that crime myself. Yeah. I but I don't believe, uh, by, by the way, I believe in our system of jurisprudence, and even if the jury was wrong or acquitted somebody for all the wrong reasons, which I believe they did in that case, um, I don't believe in jailing people for one thing when in reality you're jailing them for another thing. Right, all right. So, but, uh, and I don't care what color they are. But by yeah. the same token, um, it's only human. If you believe O.J. Simpson committed murder in 1994, it's only human to say, I'm glad to see that guy go to... For example, Fred Goldman. Yeah. Now, can you blame Fred Goldman for being happy that O.J. Simpson's going to prison? I personally, I don't think... Fred Goldman, to me, he's an opportunist, and I see him following O.J. around. What he is or isn't, can you blame him for feeling happy about it? Yes, yes. I mean, yes, I can because I don't. I, I believe deep down inside, he does not. He himself is, does not believe that OJ is guilty. But oh he's an come on, come on, come on! You don't believe I'm sorry. that. Come I, on, I don't. I don't. I don't come like. On. I don't like Fritz. I, I, I feel myself come on. that he's an opportunist and he's taking advantage of the situation. I, so I, you really think that Fred Goldman what, wanted to lose his son so he could he could get millions of dollars? Do you really no, believe I, that? No, I don't think he wanted to lose the sum, but I'm just saying since he lost it and since OJ was the one that's accused, I think for him it's an opportunity. He's an All opportunity. he has done is tried to make OJ's life difficult in the absence of a conviction. Uh, and by the way, he hasn't gotten that much money out of OJ. OJ, he can't get blood from a stone. Well, well, he, he tried. He took. He took money from his book. <laughs> but the, he he didn't take money from the book. He now owns the book. Well, but he's still making money from but it. But nobody yeah. wanted to buy it. The book was not a bestseller. Nobody bought the book. Well, 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 he, well. Like I said, I, I just, I personally, um, it's you know, like I said, you, you, you have. I understand we both have different opinions, but I'm just saying, my, my personal opinion, I feel that like 
I'm just, I'm, I get ang- I'm very angry with a lot of these foreigners and whites because I know that their opinions are biased. And I, I'm very angry with them, especially that last woman that called, because see, these are the type of people that say, oh, I'm not prejudiced, my best friend is black. Well, you know, see, I know, I, look, I know but there's I, a certain amount of that out there, and I, I feel the way you do about that, that those people uh, need uh, an injection of integrity. But, but I got to tell you something, in this particular case, come on, OJ is a bad man. He's a bad man. Yeah, he, he was wrong. And I, now, and by the I way, I, I, by the way, I believe Phil Spector's a bad man too, and I hope he goes to prison. Well, see, now that now see that that Tom, I can give you credit because see, at least you yourself have mentioned somebody else that's of another race that's guilty too. But see, none of these other callers have called in and said that. All they all they're thinking about is OJ. That's all they're thinking. By about. the way, I want to tell you something. Phil Spector has not been found guilty. He is, uh, uh, of course, he had a mistrial, and they're going to try him again, uh, but. My personal belief is not only that he did it, but that there are so many women who have said he's committed violent acts in their presence or made threats against them. I I can't believe anything but that he did it. Okay. And so and so my hope is that he's found guilty and goes to prison. I could. And by the way, I also believe that Robert Blake was guilty and belongs in prison. Exactly. So it's for me. It's not a race thing. For me, you know what it is for me. It's Uh a celebrity thing. Right. It's a rich person thing. It's the idea that people who are rich or they're celebrities uh, know that if they hire enough attorneys, they can muddy up the waters and 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 prevent a conviction. Yeah, I and and I, I appreciate that, Tom. I appreciate the fact that you are able to see on both sides. But a lot of your callers, they aren't. They don't say nothing about Robert Blake. They don't say nothing about Phil Spector. You're the only one that says. Those two names. And hang, hang on a second. Well, thank you for that, uh, Israel. Hang on a second. Jeff, what did you want to say to Israel? I think Israel's a racist. First of all, uh, it, it doesn't matter that, that OJ is black. So, so you're hearing that uh, if white people are happy, therefore they're racist just because they're happy that he's getting put in jail? I, that I, makes I, them I, racist? I, I, th- I think a lot of them are racist because I think a lot of, a lot of them, yeah, they're accused. The man was found innocent, okay? And you all still want to say that he's guilty and he was proven innocent. See, okay. You all wouldn't do that with Robert Blake. See, uh, well, wait saying. a minute. Let, let's See, say so. Robert Blake was retried and Robert Blake was put in jail. Now, if all the white people jumped up and were happy that Robert Blake went to jail, because I think Robert Blake did murder the girl. Uh, now, so if white people jumped up and down in glee, are they going to be racist? Well, no, because they're white. What about if black people jump up down? Are they going to be racist because they're black and he's white? That, that, it's, that's it's, the same it's, thing you're saying. It's, it's just as wrong if black do it as white do it. But I'm saying, in this case, OJ happens to be black, and I believe a lot of these, a lot of the whites and the foreigners, it's not just whites, it's a lot of these foreigners, because a lot of foreigners are, are worse than whites when it comes to this racism. Well, but I'm saying a lot, a, lot of these, a lot of these white foreigners, Mexicans, all of them, okay, a lot of them, they, they have problems with black. And so they they like they like the fact when blacks get in trouble. They love they love to see blacks go down. And I, maybe I they're I, okay. I, maybe they're happy not because he's black. Maybe they're just happy because justice is being served. I, I, I believe that because the man was proven innocent, and they still want to say that he's guilty. So well, I'm saying I'm sorry. If he, so, okay, and, and he was, this, and this, he was and this law in, in the United States law. What does it say? You, Guilty, uh, I mean, innocent until proven guilty. He was proven innocent. And you no, he was, to like, no, he was not. He was not proven innocent. He was proven not guilty, and he was also proven oh, oh, guilty so what, what is in not a guilty? trial. What, what is not guilty? Not guilty. Guilty is innocent, right? Well, no, not guilty is not guilty. <laughs> not guilty does not mean innocent, sir. I'm sorry, you my are, friend. Right. I'm sorry, my friend. I disagree with you hardly, and nothing you can say can change my mind at all. Oh, Zero. Uh, you, this, you, this, you can't. This, 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 you cannot change an ignorant mind. I'm sorry. Right. You are okay. Ignorant, well, sir. you can't change mine either. I just told you, I'm, I still stand. Say what I what I say. All right, uh, Jeff. Thank you. Let me get Jim in here. Jim, what do you want to say to Israel? Oh, Dom, you gotta get this idiot off the off the air. How dare he call Fred Goldman opportunist who lost his son's life to O.J. Simpson? What 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 nerve? And and I'm sorry. You know what? Um, not guilty is very different from being proven innocent. Look it up in a law book, idiot. Look it up. Well, I, hey, it's not I, the same thing. Hey, it's not. No, I, no, no, no. Wait. I'll, I'll, be, it I'll, I'll be. I'm tired I'll of be, hearing your crap come out of your mouth. You're just spewing crap. I'll be an idiot. You don't know what you're I'll saying. Be, I'll be. I'll not be, guilty. I'll, not guilty is different than innocent. And you yeah, know what? Well, the only reason I'm, he got off because you have these uneducated jurors that thought, "Oh, I'm not going to get victim on a blood well, test." Women, now, why, why DNA, are they uneducated? DNA why are they uneducated? Is, is not a blood test. Why are they uneducated? Okay? 
You're, why are they you're an idiot. You don't know the law. You why are they on that case? Difference between not guilty and why, why innocent. Are they is. You haven't answered my question yet. Why are they uneducated? You are uneducated. You're saying uneducated no, 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 things. No, no, why, why were the jurors uneducated? Because they didn't know what a DNA test meant. They no, thought it was no. a blood test. They oh, thought oh, DNA oh. was a blood test. It is not a blood test. No. DNA oh. is better than a fingerprint. No, DNA oh, so, oh, is conclusive. So. Well, hey, hey, they spilled yeah, well, blood well, different well, places. They blood dropped blood. I, I'm sorry, bro. I, no, I don't you know, what, Tom. You, you, know, you, you, wanna, I, you I don't want to come even, out and say I they weren't. Can't even stomach you, this you, anymore. Can you take that with a bong hit? What you really want to say is because they were black, they weren't educated. That's what we want to say. <laughs> All right, let's take Jim out with a bong hit. Here we go. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Yes, from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. The shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. We're ripped to the calls faster. Anything can happen here at one 800 866 Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, I know this was a while ago, but uh, I wanted to comment on that uh, caller who called in and told you to challenge a soccer player or to see if you would continue saying what you say in front of a soccer player. And all I wanted to say back to that is anybody who wants to fight my dad can fight with me first. I love that. Absolutely. And people at best take note of that. Yeah, that's right, Tom. You, you got our backs, we got yours. Sounds good to me, Chris. I have a good one, Tom. Can you take me out with a bong hit and thank you, Jesus? I certainly can. Thank you, Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Matt on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Happy Friday. And to you. And I was getting in the car heading home from work today, and I hear this uh, thing on the radio that you're working tomorrow. I am working tomorrow, yes. And I just, uh, after hearing that, I was kind of like, long week, getting ready to go to the bar. And, you know, I was just thinking of my dad and how he should have to work tomorrow. And, and, and myself, I own my own business. If someone asked me to work Friday, I charge a premium. You can best believe I charged a premium and I got a pound of flesh. <laughs> I figured so. I mean, if you're going to work Saturday, I mean, your job is, is probably... By the way, fun, I'll but... tell you how much I'm sacrificing. Tomorrow, I'm going to Las Vegas to watch the De La Hoya Pacquiao fight. I'm going to be at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. If you watch it on pay-per-view, you'll see me at the fight. But rather than, uh, you know, going to my room and resting up and hitting a couple of slot machines and having a couple of beers, I'm going to be sitting here talking to morons. That's what I'm going to be doing before the fight. You get paid good money to do that. I always listen to the show, and that's what I think. It's like, man, that's, that's really, you have to get paid a lot to talk to some of these idiots that call into the show. And I like to think uh, myself, I'm a caller above that, but... Yes, I know. We I all it. we all like to think that. Well, can you take me out with uh, old school, please, Tom? Yes, of course. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Bob on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Uh, the other day you were saying that uh, uh, former Assembly Nunez, uh, his son is a reflection of what he is. Yes, and if his son is convicted of murder, uh, I'm not saying he would be a murderer, but I would say it reflects badly on him. It tells us something about him and his lifestyle. Would, and therefore, I would not vote for Fabian Nunez if his son were convicted of murder. Would you say that uh, Mr. O.J. Simpson's mother uh, would be responsible for what uh, happened today in court to I him? I certainly would. Uh, now, what about the Menendez brothers? Look what they did to their parents. Now is that the... Well, you know, uh, that's an interesting question, and I would have to say, uh, yeah, probably so. Okay, because uh, in my situation, I have a youngster who uh, has an influence on the other side of his family tree, 
And uh, anything I tell him, he's told to do the opposite. So how am I going to be responsible? Well, because you married a person who did oh. not uh, agree with you and you did not discuss with them the ramifications of not agreeing on how to raise a child. Well, thankfully, I did not marry this person, but I have been uh, involved in uh, our child's life uh, for the last 17 years from the right. day that that but, child but, was born. But why did, but, you ha why did you have a child? Uh, that's what happens, you know, when you don't listen to 101. Uh, uh, that's right. So, yes, you see, you are responsible. Yeah, yes, I am. But how are you responsible when the influence on the other side of the table... Because is, the is influence, what, the, you chose the influence, and you chose not to wear a condom when you decided to penetrate the influence. But this person who is uh, our child, who is 17, who could be considered an adult now, is making these decisions based upon what influence... Uh, what the influence is telling them and what but they you allowed them to be born you allowed that child to be born and you allowed the child to be born to that mother and that side of the family and so did and so did these other parents and how are I, you I said that? I said I mean, you're both responsible yes but how am I responsible when it, you know if good and evil do not mix and that you and wanted to you wanted to have sex evil. and you had sex with evil yeah you had sex without a condom that. with evil you had an evil spawn. Well, the the influence turned the spawn evil. You chose to be with someone who ha has that personality. You did that. And do you think that this person, uh, the minor we're speaking of, uh, would take the hard road or the easy road? I don't know what you mean. Well, would, what's easier to, to take advantage of? You know, you want the easy road or you want the hard road? Again, who yeah, chose well, who chose his mother? Hey. Do you, do you know for a fact that I knew that we were having a child? You know, how do you know? When you didn't well, use a condom, it was it, it, it was pretty likely. It, but it's not guaranteed, Tom. Well, you know, no, you're not well, guaranteed but, a child every you didn't, time. But you you're did have nothing that. to prevent it from happening. Nothing. But there's no guarantee that it was going to turn out yeah. this way. Again, <laughs> we're not talking about guarantees. We're talking about what you did, and what you did was you allowed this to happen. And you have to take responsibility. And part of the reason this is happening is because you won't take your responsibility. The Tom Likas Show.